Hey everyone, it's Matt C, and this is uh, another um, Driven Stories kind of thing, but I'm not driving, I'm just kind of walking around in my front yard. <laughs> um, this is something that just kind of hit me, I've been thinking about it over the weekend, I didn't really want to drive, and um, or we'll just kind of wait till the morning to record this, and I'm not sure if I can get it out in 10 minutes, we're going to see. Uh, spoiler alert, you can probably tell <laughs> already, but I can't tell because you're in the future and I'm not. So um, what am I talking about? So there's this thing uh, and we all suffer from it and turns out there's not a term for it. So I'm going with like uh, fear of stink syndrome, <laughs> stink fear, maybe let's, let's just call it stink fear for the time being. Um, let me know if you got a better idea for this, but uh, it's the, it's the phenomenon when uh, and I learned about this, uh, for those of y'all who don't know, like I have something of a, um, it's not a medical background, but it's like kind of where I like kind of had to be around hospitals a lot. Um, uh, sometimes people call it allied health. Uh, I'm not even allied health. Um, anyway, <laughs> I had to learn about medicine a lot. And uh, there's this thing where people, uh, uh, doctors and nurses will stop going to the uh, hospital room of a uh, patient who has already been um, diagnosed with something terminal and is dying. Uh, <laughs> more, more of it I know, right? But you can it's, put yourself in this situation, right? Instinctively, uh, you've got uh, 10 rooms and nine of these people look like they could or could not make it, but it's unclear. Uh, you've got a motivation to attend to those patients and uh, continue to pursue a uh, positive, um, you know, compatible with life patient outcome. By the way, uh, <laughs> it's really creepy. Freshman year med students, a lot of them, uh, they'll say not compatible with life. Uh, it's the most like robot, um, Terminator, Dark Fate, creepy <laughs> alien thing you could say. Uh, to try to uh, um, anesthetize the situation or, or kind of uh, decontaminate it of uh, emotions. <laughs> um, medical people are sometimes weird, uh, but I get it, honestly. But uh, even, even though uh, they'll do stuff like that, uh, there's an instinct that they have to fight. They learn about it in med school, and uh, uh, a lot of people learn about it. I'm going to apply this to the comics community, that uh, when something is failing... Uh, uh, stink fear uh, sets in for potential customers uh, because they see something that doesn't look like it's going to make it. Let's say it's an Indiegogo campaign, right? Uh, let's say it's uh, got seven days left of a 30-day campaign and it's at like 56% funded, right? Um, doesn't look like it's going to make it. Uh, why am I um, going to... Uh, you know, pledge, uh, it's more than a pledge. I mean, it basically takes it out of your account right then, right? Um, $25, $30 plus shipping for a campaign that doesn't look like it's going to fund, knowing that if it doesn't fund, and it almost certainly won't, that uh, I get my money back, right? In full. So there's no harm, no foul. But uh, it's basically, it's the shadow side of the other phenomenon, like the people like to be a part of a winning team, right? Uh, when there's something that's, when there's momentum building, uh, when people uh, can tell that there's really something going on where there's a lot of success happening with a particular comic campaign, uh, that makes me, makes uh, most people uh, really excited about um, jumping on with that. I don't know what the term for that is either. And I'm not smart enough to come up with the term for that on the fly. <laughs> but I've got stink fear. So uh, I think, so first of all, I think it's important to overcome it. And then uh, I'll tell you what it means to overcome it. So you know why it's worth overcoming. So I think it's important to overcome it because a lot of campaigns. So let's look at my own campaign, right? I've been very. Uh, 
transparent about this process with Curie Book One, uh, still in Indiegogo, and the link is in the description. Um, <clears throat> at least if you're listening to this before December 15th, we're going to close the store once we get the books and start shipping. Um, <clears throat> I was about uh, seven days out and trying to remember, maybe like something like 70% funded. It might have been in the 60s even. And I was about a thousand bucks shy of the three, 3,000 or so uh, campaign uh, fixed gold minimum. So guess what I did? Um, <laughs> I, I ponied up the thousand bucks because uh, I, I, I told people it was going to get funded one way or another. And I put my personal money in to uh, make sure that the people who were willing to give uh, up to that point were going to get, they weren't going to get a refund at the end of 30 days. They were going to get a uh, success story, basically. Uh, there would be no fear of uh, stink fear, right? And they were, um, they were going to get a book. And then people who uh, did have stink fear, I don't know if this term is going to catch on. I feel like it's not. <laughs> I'm already getting tired of it. People who already um, uh, could tell that maybe this is not a campaign that has momentum and we're avoiding it, uh, that basically I just, I blew the doors down and said, guess what, guys? This is happening. It's going now. The campaign is funded. You will get a book. Uh, for those of you who don't already know, that all the pages are done. So it's not like it takes time to make it. The book's done. Now the printing goal is met, uh, the funding goal. So you will get a book. So basically 100% guarantee. And guess what happened? Uh, when I did that about seven days out, putting a thousand bucks in, I made like 1500 bucks before the end. So the thing funded, uh, it was the best seven days. Now, a lot of people say that the back end is when you get more, uh, you know, campaign contributions. And I'm sure that's true, but I saw immediate uh, within hours after uh, funding the rest myself, uh, everyone just kind of jumped in because this, you know, the stink was gone, and uh, I made up the difference. You guys made up the difference, and then some. And uh, yeah, so um, it was a gamble, and it worked. And hopefully, I don't have to do it again. We'll see. Um, the exciting thing about doing a four book series is that uh, book one is an untested product, right? But once you get it and you see that you love the story, you love the art, you love the physical book quality, that you'll be interested in coming back for more. And, um, you know, and the quality will just keep improving as we go along. There'll be less and less risk of an unfunded campaign. And uh, yeah, but... <clears throat> So, uh, I lost, lost the train of thought. So when it comes to this, uh, issue, uh, I think it's important to overcome it personally, to overcome this aversion to only to, uh, avoiding, uh, contributing to things that you would actually like, uh, to campaigns that you do think are quality, um, that you'd like to receive a book from, but you don't think are gonna, it doesn't look as likely to succeed as others. I think it's important to overcome that because honestly, I mean, what is a campaign other than it's meant for you to, um, you know, these campaigns are built so that you can get what you want when you want it. And uh, there's a lot of people like you <laughs> A lot of people like me who, uh, if they just, um, if they notice that they're, they're worried and they're just waiting for everyone else to chip in, uh, if, if everyone just chipped in just because of the, the value of the product, um, campaigns would already be funded. So, and that's what happened with my campaign, right? I, I, um, I removed the barriers to whether or not the book would get funded and then everyone felt free, uh, no risk involved, even though that's the funny thing, right? There's no risk in giving to a campaign. 
that fails, you get your money back. But, uh, but there is like an emotional risk of disappointment, right? So I take that emotional risk of disappointment away, uh, but by giving money to my own campaign, but, um, you can do that yourself by just saying, you know what, I'm going to remove my own barriers. Uh, this is a, I'm not going to be, uh, I'm not going to not try to give because I'm afraid of the disappointment of a failed campaign. I'm just going to give based on my interest in the book and uh, hopefully more people do the same and then more books do in fact get funded, not just the ones that are already funded or, you know, it, it doesn't all just funnel into a few campaigns that have already met their funding goals, uh, more meet their minimum. And, you know, I mean, rising tide lifts all boats, right? So that's why I think it's important to do it. And uh, I guess, it, did I talk about how you overcome it? I guess I don't really know how. I guess you just have to realize, I have to realize that that's something that we struggle with. Um, I think when you have a campaign, and I've seen a lot of friends uh, do this, when you have a campaign that is struggling and uh, you're, you're worried if you're going to get funded and it's looking like it's going to come down to the final days uh, before it can get funded, that that, um, that creates an aversion in your own mind. You get the stink fear, I guess, of your own campaign. And then it, it, it becomes uh, painful to promote it becomes uh uh maybe you're ashamed of its of its its own uh, the quality of your campaign and uh sometimes these things get externalized and projected uh maybe you start blaming others i don't know maybe there's a victim narrative or something or maybe there's uh, some kind of a uh, uh larger scheme uh these sort of things happen and it's entirely it's natural and understandable but it's not healthy obviously <laughs> and it's it's uh very often not true it's just uh people grasping uh and it's something i'll probably talk about in another vi video it's like it's the theme of um uh, you probably heard about this sort of thing if you've done um kind of lifeguard uh what do you call it training for uh, first aid kind of response sort of things. I haven't, but for some reason I know about this, where uh, if someone is drowning, uh, you don't wanna you know, dive in the water, swim right up to them and give them a hug and drag them to shore. You want to, um, I said I was gonna make another video of this, but maybe I'll just, you know, <laughs> what's a, why make two morbid videos when you could just make one? Uh, uh, you wanna keep them at arm's length because the instinct for that person is to struggle to pull you under to save themselves, you know, which they don't even realize they're doing, but they're going to try and grab you to climb on top of you to get to the surface. And you need to, uh, in order to save them and yourself, uh, you need to uh, hold them at a distance. And I think that's a, that's like an internalized sort of snake fear where, uh, uh, you're feeling desperate that your campaign isn't doing as well as it should. You start feeling, feeling about, uh, you feel deeply, very, very helpless. And you start trying to latch on maybe to other group creators, maybe the creators you can blame, maybe creators you can uh, beg for help from. You start trying to uh, invest uh, with emotional urgency into those around you to uh, <clears throat> climb on top of in some way in order to uh, save your campaign. And uh, this almost never works. Um, I'd just say it, it never works. It probably has always failed when it comes to campaigns. Everyone, because, every, because of the stink fear, I'm really hating that I'm saying it. <laughs> Give me a better term for this. But uh, people can tell that you're struggling, uh, that you've got the stink of potential failure 
and they will avoid you, which leads you to cling to others even more, to grasp even farther out, to grab people, to help your, uh, the anxiety of a potentially failed campaign. And you, uh, you know, this kind of upcycles, right? Until you get to a point where not only is your campaign failed, but you've left your backers and people who have watched the campaign in a worse position than they were when you began, because now, uh, I don't know, they've seen your bad side, I guess. They've seen you get desperate and worried and uh, stinky stuff they've seen, right? So you don't want to do that. <laughs> it's another reason to get over this thing. So you don't internalize it. You don't sabotage your own campaign that you can uh, do it again better in the future. Uh, you can stay positive throughout your campaign. You can close it in a positive fashion or, or just let it run out. And then you can um, allow yourself to... Uh, um, sorry, someone's just kind of <laughs> slowly driving their car past me kind of creepy um it's only two days after halloween anyway um they can uh what was i talking about if you stay positive throughout your campaign which takes serious uh discipline and effort uh if you can stay positive no matter where your campaign is uh that encourages uh you know the opposite of stake it creates a a positive aroma around your campaign that naturally draws people to it because it smells like a winning campaign no matter how well it's doing or how poorly it's doing so that if it fails it fails on a win because the backers who did follow you and follow your campaign feel like that they saw your positivity uh, your confidence in the campaign your um, strength and resolve your care and commitment to the campaign and to the backers they saw that on display they saw it tested in se in severe ways because a failed campaign is a strong test of your character and if you come through that better than you were before that is a personal character success that people will respond to better uh and pro probably be more inclined to back you at a future date, right? So um, just to wrap this up, um, I did do a campaign. It, well, it was my digital publisher who ran a Kickstarter campaign two years ago. 20, um, it was summer of 20, I guess it would be 2017. And for my book and a few others, that campaign had a very high cost because we were trying to fund uh, something. It might have been five books. I think it was like 30 grand or something we were looking for, 28 or something. And we got to like 20, which is pretty good. It's pretty okay. Well, it wasn't good enough, obviously. And maintaining a positive, uh, uh, avoiding uh, applying a sense of um, uh, internalizing that failure uh, to backers and potential customers and fans uh, and, and displaying that stink for them to see so that they have ample opportunity to avoid you in the future because <laughs> uh, no one likes a frowny face on their timeline. Uh, I was able to um, stay positive. I think I just kind of mostly stay quiet. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how I dealt with that, looking back on it. I didn't flail about, but I was intensely aware that that was a, uh, a pressure. That's an instinct that, uh, I think everyone's kind of born with. And, um, I was able to come back two years later and then fund the thing myself. And now we're at, um, you know, I, I mean, it's in the high six thousands close to seven thousand which is ample uh and is ample funds basically to pay 
uh, pay me back completely for the thousand that I put in and then some and pay for all the costs for shipping, for printing, uh, for these tariffs, these China tariffs, it's like 15%. Um, getting that paid now, uh, paying for all these promotional stuff that come with the books and the map on the inside, uh, spot gloss. I mean, you just name it. Uh, we did, we, we got an excellent product and that's because, I, I mean, on a book that was a, we attempted to print in 2017 and we're not able to. Uh, but a lot of people came back from that first one and felt like, I guess it was still worth it. And hopefully my attitude was able to uh, um, inspire confidence in people that second time's the charm, basically. So yeah, so that's, that's the video. Um, I'm not gonna call this uh, stink fear. <laughs> But, um, yeah, that's kind of the, the charge that I try to put on myself. I know this, this is getting stupider by the moment, but you know what I mean? Like, uh, this is something that I try to hold myself accountable to, uh, to not take things personally when expectations are not met, to not project them onto others and, uh, start ascribing motives or I don't know, like all these kind of negative uh, cycles that you can get into when your campaign isn't doing what it should be doing uh, to continue continually to keep a positive face and uh, because I'm confident in the book uh, I know it's quality whether the uh, we can find enough people to back it or not is immaterial that I can uh, but I can also do what it takes to maybe make the campaign better make the book better so that more people come back next time, which is what I, I did between 2017 and 2019. We improved a lot of the art, stuff like that. And uh, yeah, I just did, obviously did the campaign for just myself, for just this one book. So we didn't have to ask for 28 grand, all these kind of things. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the video. Um, hopefully it makes sense. Uh, so look, look at yourself. Uh, see if there's, if you do have this instinct, which I'm pretty sure you do, of avoiding failure, other people's failures, uh, avoiding even potential fa failure, because you don't want to be, a, maybe you don't emotionally want to associate yourself with a uh, less successful campaign or an almost success, a, you know, a, uh, a failed campaign, basically. And uh, even though knowing that you'll get your money back this still feels like a waste to invest it in something. Uh, overcoming that allows more campaigns to be fulfilled. It, it really does. And it also helps you personally when you have your own business ventures, like a campaign, to uh, uh, not take things personally so that you can do, you can continue to inspire confidence in people, which just inspires more uh, backers to back your product yeah so <laughs> pretty rambling but i hope that makes sense let me know what you think in the comments uh let me know if you think is, is there a better term for this stink fear um and uh yeah i'll uh i'll just stop it now <laughs> check out my uh, campaign so like i said we've got about 40 days or so before the uh, books are here. It takes like six weeks, um, but we're like a week, week and a half through that, thereabouts. And um, yeah, by around December 15th, we should be getting the books. And then once we have them, the store closes and we just start fulfilling. And then book two, book two we have completed as well. That's just sitting, waiting for the printer that campaign should start. We're trying to figure out where in the winter, late winter, to actually do this. Um, everyone says, that, you know, it's notoriously difficult to do a campaign in January or even February. We're looking at February, but it could be as late as March to do something. But we want to try to do two campaigns this year, uh, again, with 
a fulfillment date before the end of 2020. So everything's kind of wrapped up with a nice bow and I'm not uh, fulfilling books in 2021 for a campaign from 2020 that gets really tricky with taxes. So um, book three is also, so that means two books. So that's book two and book three for 2020 is scheduled. I'm most of the way through finishing the art for book three. So it's just a matter of um, getting to the end of that. Uh, so look for a uh, summer campaign for that, probably, for book three. And then uh, 2020, 2021 will be book four. And then we'll be on to uh, bigger and better things. I mean, who knows? We're, we're still kind of blue skying that at this point, kind of casting about for what kind of different tales to tell. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the, uh, 2020 schedule and yeah, um, to check out the, uh, campaign for book one in the description and follow me on Twitter at Matt Krotz, uh, also Instagram, same handle, and I'll, uh, talk to you later. Thanks. Bye.